Who lives in the canopy over the trees. Hi, love, Bates, Lark. It is a new day in the lush tropical rainforest of Southeast Asia. As the sun rises, all the animals from the emergent layer and canopy all the way to the rainforest floor rise up with it as well. This unique habitat teeming with many varieties of life, ranging from tiny microscopic insects all the way to majestic leopards and tigers, opens itself up to new interactions daily. Whether it's predator and prey, mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism, there's a unique role and niche for every animal in the rainforest. In the midst of it all is the lar gibbon, or scientifically known as the hylobates lar. The lar gibbon is most commonly found in Southeast Asia in the countries of Laos, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, and Thailand. While we may like to think of the lar gibbon as being unique, beautiful monkeys, they have many close relatives known as the silvery gibbon, pileated gibbon, and the agile gibbon. What sets these organisms apart is their different colored fur and some have different adaptations to help them in different environments. However, specific to the lard gibbon, there are several structural, behavioral, and physiological adaptations that help it survive in the rainforest. One example of a lard gibbon structural adaptation is the fact that all lard gibbons have elongated forelimbs, hands, and feet. Because lard gibbon environments consist heavily of forests, they travel from tree to tree in a process known as brachiation. Thus, extended hands, feet, and forelimbs are necessary. In fact, most lar gibbons rarely touch the floor of the rainforest because they spend all their lives living among the trees. An example of a lar gibbon behavioral adaptation is the fact that they avoid open water. This is mainly because they are not made to swim, but can instead leap several feet forward to get over large bodies of water. Physiologically, lar gibbons are very well known for their remarkable agility. They are the most active of all the forest apes and monkeys. As a result, a healthy lar gibbon is near impossible for a predator to catch. Having adaptations to survive in the wild isn't enough, as the lar gibbons have to regulate what's going on inside their own bodies. Lar gibbons maintain homeostasis through two different ways. They are both homeothermic and endothermic. Homeotherms, which include most mammals, maintain a stable internal body temperature regardless of external influence. Lar gibbons are also endotherms, meaning that they create most of their heat through metabolic processes. If there is more heat loss than generated, metabolism increases to recover the loss, or the organism shivers to raise its body temperature. If more heat is generated than lost, mechanisms such as panting or perspiring cool the organism down. In scientific circles, the lar gibbon is known as a consumer. Its diet consists of a large variety of foods like figs, nuts, and berries, but it will also eat insects, wasps, and even bird eggs. Here we have a female lar gibbon just scratching her head doing nothing. Now watch as the male gibbon approaches. At first, it looks like they're hugging each other. Well, it looks like now the male wants to have sex with her. She gets down on her back, the male stands up, trying to enter her body. They're pretty quiet about this, not doing much movement. Looks like they're pretty lazy. Now he's standing up again, moving, him, moving back up and down. Now crouching, getting on top of her. And they're trying another position. Now the female wants to leave and she feels threatened by the male. But the male doesn't want to. Now the male lies down and asks for the female to come on top of him. The female is reluctant. Now the male goes on top of her. Crouching, moving, forward, moving left and right. They're trying another position. Looks like they're playing tack. Oh, now he's, uh, now he's asking the female to come on top of him again. Now he's grabbing a branch just to make sure his posture is straight, and then he's ready. They're looking around to see if anybody's watching. They think nobody's watching, so they continue with their movements. While the lar gibbon may seem like a pretty isolated animal, like many animals, it plays some important roles in the ecosystem. Because fruit makes up around 50% of their diet, the lar gibbon takes up the crucial role of seed dispersal, which is a way a plant reproduces. 
This helps sustain ecosystems because producers are at the base of the ecological pyramid and provide energy to all the higher trophic levels. In addition, this helps humans because it allows farmers to grow their crops to make a profit and to feed others. Large gibbons are important for continuing the flow of energy. In addition, humans are shown to be very close descendants of the large gibbon, so they benefit humans by showing our evolutionary background. At this point, after seeing how they're near impossible for predators to get, have a diverse diet, and provide important ecological services, you're probably wondering how in the world the large gibbon is endangered. However, due to the illegal pet trade going on in Thailand, where they hunt and exploit the animal for food, and also given the fact that the rainforests that they live in are being exploited and deforested, it has led to dwindling numbers of the large gibbon population. There's still some hope. Humans seem to be doing a few things to keep these gibbons alive. First of all, humans are trying to make protected conservation areas to prevent the demise of this species. However, even this seems to be at risk for failure, as constant agricultural development in this area increases both fragmentation and access for hunters. Also, Humans are trying to increase awareness for gibbons, trying to let people know why not to kill them and why the environment is good with them. Unfortunately, this is not enough to counteract the terrible impact that humans have had on the livelihood of the lard gibbon. Given current selective pressures and changes in the gene pool, it is easy to predict that this species will not go completely extinct. However, this species may stay endangered and may even become critically endangered over time. As data shows that large gibbon populations have gone down significantly, 50% over the last 45 years, due to deforestation and poaching. If this trend continues, the large gibbon population will keep going down, and sadly enough, has a chance at extinction. Unfortunately, gibbons don't contribute much to the ecosystem that they live in, except for their diet through seed dispersal, and aren't a big part of the food web, as most animals can't catch them. This doesn't mean that we should let the large gibbon die off, but rather we should expand conservation efforts of all the animals in the rainforest. Because no matter what, whether it's the large gibbon or a majestic tree, we're all alive because of them.